I've wanted an Xbox for a long time for many reasons. One of those reasons being that Outlast has an Xbox exclusive achievement that's right up my alley. And I recently bought an Xbox Series X. So now it's showtime. And that achievement I speak of is none other than the Energizer achievement. Only for the most epic gamers, and certainly not for the faint of heart, this achievement requires you to complete the game on insane difficulty without reloading the batteries in your camera. And if you don't already know, Outlast's insane mode is a permadeath run where upon meeting your demise, you start at the very beginning. In this video, I aim to get this achievement in one try. Do I have what it takes? Watch the video to find out for yourself. In Outlast, I am Miles Upshur, a journalist hell-bent on finding out the truth about Mount Massive Asylum, a nut house secluded deep in the Colorado mountains. I began my journey calm, cool, and collected, sprinting my way to a scaffolding. I climbed to the top and entered through a broken window. Here's the part where I mention there will be some dark parts in this video. Not dark like a Slipknot song, but dark as far as the lighting. In order to conserve battery in my camera, I elected to not use the camera for quite a few parts. Don't worry, the video will still be entertaining, uh, probably. Soon I would pass by a behemoth of a man that I could smell before I even saw him. He gave me a warm welcome by throwing me through a window. I came to on the floor of the Nuthouse's lobby and was given a second greeting. A guy who looked like he bought a priest costume from Spirit Halloween, with breath like a pack-a-day smoker who hadn't showered in three weeks. He told me that I was to spread the gospel, aka film everything with my camera. And as long as it wasn't something of mine that would be spread, I was totally fine with that. I had to get into the security room, so I ran past some of the inhabitants of this fine establishment, snatched a keycard up, and promptly got jumped by a guy faking a disability in a wheelchair. Great. On my way to the security room, I tried the elevator for shits and giggles. This prompted a man to plummet to his death. Here, I unknowingly earned the Elevator Operator achievement. Upon my arrival to the security room, the Great Value Priest shut off the power, and the behemoth from earlier, Chris Walker, showed up. I slipped past him and promptly ran to the basement. Here's one of the handfuls of dark parts of my journey. Down in the damp, dark, wet basement, I hit two buttons, and then a nutcase showed up promptly. I ran past him into a dark hallway where I turned the power back on. He gave chase and I smacked another button, earning me the Illuminated achievement and ran upstairs. Heading to the security room again, I felt uneasy and just as certain as the sky is blue, Father Freak Show injected me with an unknown substance. As I slipped into La La Land, I hoped to hell that it wasn't a used needle infected with Hippopotamus C. I awoke with a sore ass and convinced myself it was from the fall I took earlier. I was in a cell and someone with an eye for art used their own blood or someone else's, to scrawl some encouraging messages on the padded walls. At this point, I had to press a button and unlock one of the decontamination chambers to continue forward. After outsmarting one of the inmates, I hit the button to access the airlock. Then I ran past another whack job who was swinging a nightstick like it meant something. I then made my way to a dark area overlooking the prison where I snatched a keycard from a dead security guard. This keycard got me into the showers where I first encountered the naked twins whose full frontal nudity will unfortunately not be included in this video. I hurled myself out of a window and shimmied along so I could avoid these twins who were trying to spread my gospel. After smacking another one of the many red buttons in this game, Chris Walker reared his ugly mug. I sprinted away and was blown out of a window. In my now second fall of the night was cushioned by the bits and pieces of dead men. Seconds later, Chris Walker showed up again. In the darkness, I slipped by him and entered the prison. The screams of the inmates made my head swim psychobabble about needing to be clean and talk of how I was making them look into their own reflections. Their words, not mine. After climbing to the top of the prison and quickly descending downwards, I made my way towards the sewers. I would need to turn two separate valves in order to drain the sewers. Chris Walker showed up again and I made my way past him without issue. Cranking both valves, I earned the flushed achievement for draining the sewers. I then climbed down into the bowels of the asylum. If you can believe it, the smell of fresh shit, piss, blood, and God knows what else was like an air freshener when compared to Chris Walker's grotesque musk. I ran into a guy who was fluent in Japanese. Bro just kept going on and on talking about a dead doctor who performed procedures on living patients. I would have loved to sit and chat with him for 10 years, but I wanted to get out of this nut house alive. Eventually, I would enter the void that was the main sewer. The smell of Chris Walker overpowered the smell of everything else, and I knew he was nearby. I would need to be careful in order to wade around the water and avoid him. It was here that I used my camera's night vision, as a drained battery is better than a body drained of blood. I jumped to the ladder, got stuck on it for a second, 
wondering if this would be my end. Thankfully, I got unstuck and made it up with my life. Continuing my journey through this madhouse, I arrived at the male ward. It was here that I was pursued by three crazies. Eventually, they cornered me in a room with a dumb waiter. A voice instructed me to get inside of it if I wanted to live. I obliged, and on the way up, I had wondered if the voice was in my head. Was I finally going crazy? Turns out the voice was real. It was the voice of Dr. Traeger, a truly sick and twisted individual who tortures people for fun. He took me to a room that looked like it was straight out of a Saw film and proceeded to cut one finger from each of my hands. I escaped from my confinement and dodged the doctor. Eventually, I found a key that would grant me access to an elevator to escape the psycho's evil clutches. Trigger did his best to try to mutilate me further during my elevator ride, but ended up getting smushed. I got some sick satisfaction in witnessing his demise and continued further. Again, I bumped into the preacher man and he asked me if I wanted to join his Minecraft server. I politely declined. Soon after, I found myself in a burning cafeteria. Memories of pizza washed down with chocolate milk in my younger years pervaded my mind. An inmate who set the fire talked about how all the inmates who were once normal were left here and forgotten. I had to choose between being a therapist or a firefighter, and I chose the latter. Again, Chris Walker reared his fucked up face, and again I swiftly evaded him. Pulling two separate valves to activate the sprinklers, I unlocked the soaked achievement and extinguished the fire. Now it was time for me to go outside and play in the rain, and I had been meaning to get some fresh air. I grabbed a key from a shed outside that would enable me to continue my journey through this fun house from hell. Unlocking an adjacent door across the courtyard, I sprinted through the dark and was violated by the wall rider. He's a sort of ghost, demon, spectral monster guy who goes around fucking up anything in his path. During my recess outside, I had to scale some rooftops and jump ledges. This had me using a healthy portion of my camera battery. I ran into Chris Walker yet another time and had to ring him around a gazebo and then escape through a small hole in the wall. Heading inside, I went on a wild fuse chase where the game had me collecting three fuses all while being pursued by a knife-wielding nutcase. And I'll tell you what, all these people running around with knives had me feeling like I was in the UK. I placed all the fuses, causing a key to fall one story below. I collected said key and continued further on. I then lost my camera after grabbing a hold of a ledge. Son of a bitch. I'd have to go into the basement to grab it. This part wasn't very intimidating as I wasn't using night vision that much anyway on my journey. I collected the camera, then I got chased by some wackos but climbed my way back upstairs. Then I ran straight past Chris Walker into a room with a vent. It was here I needed to collect yet another key inside the Asylum's theater. And they were playing the Five Nights at Freddy's movie on the big screen. But I didn't have time to watch it. Swiping the key, I blitzed past one of the naked twins and headed upstairs to speak with a dollar store priest. It was here I witnessed Father Martin burning himself alive on a cross, like some sort of modern day Jesus Christ. He called off the wolves, so to speak. Now the only aggressors I had to worry about were Chris Walker and the Wall Rider. I guess two are better than 50. Cue another Chris Walker pursuit where I juked him as he was slamming down a door trying to get to me. I cut this one really close. Chris was too close for comfort, and honestly, for a second here, I thought it was over. Nauseous with the smell of the bastard, I managed to escape just in time. I took an elevator all the way down to the secret lab underneath the asylum. I felt uneasy and sensed death in every direction down there. It might have been because of all the tactical cops who were torn to shreds and strewn around like autumn leaves on a fine October evening. I then ran into the wall rider and had to escape the spectral ish head. In a vulgar display of power, the wall rider ripped Chris Walker three new assholes and proceeded to obliterate him through a vent. Then, a door opened and I was faced with an old man in a wheelchair. And this is the dead doctor that I mentioned earlier, Dr. Wernicke. I crowned this guy the king of Yapsville right on the spot. Motherfucker made me listen to a whole lot of bullshit for like six minutes before he'd let me leave. Cue another wall rider pursuit where I hit an event until the coast was clear. It's worth mentioning that these wall rider pursuits at the very end of the game can absolutely positively destroy your run. God knows how many times I've played this game on insane and had a run end at the very end. I eventually came to a room where a man named Billy was suspended in a sphere on life support and I would have to kill the poor bastard in hopes to stop the wall rider. How's that for a dilemma? I went and defied authority by turning a valve that explicitly told me not to. Ran from the wall rider again and jumped a gap high up on the catwalk. Then I clenched my butt cheeks while using the camera's night vision, running through a dark area where the wall rider has ended my run plenty of times before. But not this time, motherfucker. I made it through the airlock and unplugged Billy's life support like a master electrician. Running for my life, I jumped the gap again and got power bombed by the wall rider. Never fear, as this was supposed to happen. And to be quite honest, I was happy I didn't have to run down the long ass staircase again. Making my way to the main area, I slapped a button that was the final sequence in killing Billy and the wall rider was not happy. 
He took me on another ride high in the sky. I felt like Mankind in the cage match against The Undertaker. And in true Mankind versus Undertaker fashion, I fell far to the ground below. With the pain of broken bones and a fractured spirit, I apologized to Billy. It was just business, Billy. Honest. I had to kill you. I'm sorry. Making my way back to the elevator, I was met with a Duke of the Appsville again. He was accompanied by a firing squad who ultimately decided it was a good idea to kill me to death. That was a thanks I got for finding out the truth. Great. This marked the end of the game, and I got the coveted Energizer achievement for finishing the game on insane mode without reloading the camera batteries. I also got the Punished achievement for completing the game and the lunatic achievement for finishing the game on insane mode. Thank you all so much for watching, and please consider subscribing for more videos just like this one.